just a moment or two with you. If you've got a Bible, uh, access it. You've heard the scriptures read this morning. But verse 9 in Matthew 28, verse 9 in Matthew 28 is the rest of the story. And I want to help you with just a thought or two where the two Marys, they're, they're leaving the tomb. They're on their way back to tell the disciples. And they encounter the resurrected Jesus. And he says, he says a couple things to them. First of all, they are so awestruck to see someone who was dead now alive. They are so overcome with joy that they reach out and they want to lay hold of him. And he says, don't, don't hang on to me. The reason being is he was to return to the Father. But the other thing that he said is kind of fascinating to me. In the Holman Bible, that is our pew Bible here, he says these words in English, Good morning. Good morning. I don't know about you, but I like those words. Good morning. Uh, but did you realize that's almost like saying a prayer? I mean, when did your morning start? Well, mine started at 12.01 a.m. That's when morning really starts. And when did it end? We've got a stray running around here. Thank you. We'll rope him and brand him if you're not careful. Yeah. Anyway, he needed some help. All right. Thank you. Good morning, Jesus says. Well, actually, in the Greek language, what he is actually saying is, be joying, J-O-Y-I-N-G. That's a, a rough translation of that word. Um, it's an f- odd word in the Greek language. It's spelled X-A-I-P-E-T-E, and I'll leave it to you to figure out how to pronounce that. But the idea comes from Jesus. Jesus actually says in John's Gospel, chapter 14, and I think it's 27 or 28, where he says to his disciples, Peace, peace I give you, not like the world would offer to you, but I give you peace. Let not your heart be troubled. I don't know about you, but I've lived quite a few Easter's, and they seem a little harder to find joy in, just the news of the world and the shape and what people do to each other. But we have a word from the Lord, and it's good morning. I want to I give you a test. I won't keep you long. And there are, there are no wrong answers because each of you is going to have your own set of answers. But let me begin by asking you seven or eight questions. In no particular order, I'm not asking you to answer out loud, but uh, where do you go to be physically born? Well, I'll help you. You could go to the hospital. That's not a bad place to go, I don't think. And yet there are those that want to have that birth experience at a home with a midwife or someone. So hospital or home or uh, there are birthing stations. But every now and then, you know, the baby comes when the baby comes. And sometimes babies are born in taxi cabs and police cars and, you know, husbands do that. But so we don't always get to choose not only the when we were born, but where we're born. Where do you go when you're hungry? Well, that answer could be a, a multitude of things. You go to mom you know, mom's the source of all food, all good food, okay. Or you go to the refrigerator, uh, and you're marvelously surprised, men, every time you open the door, and there's exactly what you want in there. Uh, you, or you go to the grocery store, or you could go to a fast food place, or you could go to some place where somebody dressed like me, and he would ask you or she would ask you, uh, do you have reservations? Okay, so there are a lot of options, aren't there, of places to go get food or even to eat the food. I mean, you can eat in your car, you can eat outside. I imagine some of you eat in bed. That's not very appealing to me. Uh, Not you eating in bed, but me. I just, you know, that's for sleeping. So, you know, you go to the hospital to be born or wherever. You go to the restaurant or the refrigerator. Uh, Where do you go when you get sick? Some of you probably ought to go to a vet, okay? Okay. Well, I shouldn't have said that, but I said it anyway. But just, you know, because of the animalistic behaviors that you allow to rule in your life. And yet, generally, unless you're a man, you know, we we pretend we don't get sick, but we do get sick. And we get hurts and ailments. ailments, And and so if you get sick, you go to the medicine cabinet. I'm sure you have one of those. And mine's not a medicine cabinet. It doesn't say medicine cabinet. But I have a particular place where I keep the medicine that is my medicine. And and so I don't, you you know, you might look in your wife's purse, which I don't recommend. You can look in the medicine cabinet. Uh, You can go to the store and you can shop the aisles. And, you know, you can get in the the chemistry section of medicine or you can go over here in the 
the whole food section and start self-taking all of that roots and herbs that have been around for a long time. So uh, you can go to a lot of places, but you can go to the hospital when you're sick or you can go to the doctor when you're sick. Let's see, you go to the refrigerator when you're hungry. Uh, I'm not going to review those. Uh, Where do you go for entertainment? You know, again, all of our answers are different. Some of us don't want to go anywhere for entertainment, but we think we're in charge and we have this thing called a remote control. But yet, we really don't have control over what's on that television, do we? We, we sit there, and, and somebody else has decided the programming and the challenges. And all the while, Jesus has said to his disciples, those that have said that Jesus died on the cross and raised from dead to life, he said, good morning, good morning. So you go to the hospital when you don't feel good, and you might even have to ride in an ambulance to get there. But what happens if you go to the hospital and you're really, really sick and the doctor says, there's nothing else I can do for you? Where are you going to go from there? Well, a lot of people like to go home. They like to die at home. They they think they can die at home. There's something comfortable and comforting to dying at home. But, uh, you know, it's it's a strange phenomenon. Uh, I only know of one person who actually died during church, as terminal as it seems. And that was my great aunt. She literally had the audacity to ruin the preacher's sermon and the choir's music, and she died in church. That's not a bad place to be. To those of us that knew and loved Carl Haga, I remember his passing. The beginning of it was in the fellowship hall. I mean, he came to church, we fellowshiped, we worshiped, he ate a hearty meal, and in that moment, it happened began to happen. So what happens? Where, where do you go when you have died? Well, there's a, there's a funny little business down the road. They call it a home. A home. A funeral home. But they don't keep you there. Do you, you do know that, don't you? Don't you? They, don't, they, they, make you look, they make you look so on that day, people walk by and tearfully say, oh, he looks so good. Golly. You know, that's like saying about a, to, a, to a young father, those of you that are young fathers and you've, you've got a newborn and somebody looks at newborn and no teeth, no hair, you know, face all contorted from the birth experience and they look up and they smile and they think they're saying something that looks just like you. <laughs> kind of does something for your self-image, doesn't it? But it's the same way on, on that day when you've died. What are they going to do? You can say, well, I'm not going to... I'm not going to waste the money and the time. You're not going to put me in a box. No. You're going to put me in the oven. Okay? And they're going to crispy critter you, and then they're going to put you in another box. And then where are they going to put you? Well, you can pay somebody to watch over the box that you're in that you said you wouldn't want to be in. They'll put you in a box up at the cemetery. There's one up the hill here where you can pay extra to be stored above ground. Good morning, Jesus says. Good morning. You see, there's only one way into this human experience, and there's only one way out. And between the the coming and the going, Jesus says there are times that are troubling to you in your human experience. And Jesus says to them that believe, peace or good morning. Or another way to say it is keep on joying. That's hard to do, isn't it, sometimes? I mean, I could ask you, where do you go? On Easter, well, I have to go to church. Where do you go at Christmas? Well, I have to go to church. You have to go. Why? Well, if you don't go, you don't get invited to that meal that follows, right? I mean, that's often the case. And you're indulging mom or grandma or somebody else. You're indulging them. In the same way that you indulge the God who made you, who chose to make you and to bring you into His world at this particular time in history. And He has a message for you. Good morning. Isn't that amazing? The way we ignore Him, disregard Him, I don't want to live by his rules. One of you might be sitting there saying, because I used to sit where you sit. And sometimes I wish I could sit where you sit instead of having this obligation. But I've had a conversation recently, and the person just looked at me in anger, and they shook their finger, and they said, I'm just as good as you are. And I said, wow, I am sorry that you're not better than me. Because I'm still a liar. 
I am. And, and given the opportunity, if I had an opportunity, I might yield and, and, and the Baptist word is backslide, backslide and be a thief again. Or I might lust after a woman. Or, or, or I might say something that you and I would say, I took God's name in vain. I hope you are better than I am. But let me tell you something. I know the one who is better than I am. And he's done a work in me that I could not do for myself. And it is Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, my Messiah. And praise be to God, he's coming for me again. In fact, it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, I give you that so that you can read it. It begins in verse 13 where there's a quick explanation that says when Jesus comes again, there's going to be people alive, drawing breath, hearts beating, blood pressure, and all of that working. And there are going to be those people that have passed. They've de- they're, they're, they're dead. Uh, in the, the, the Bible that we read from, the word is actually sleep. They're asleep. They're, their spirit's not there, but we've laid them down. And the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians, Jesus is going to say something like, Good morning. And the dead, the dead in Christ, are going to become right up out of the ground. And there will be people running around saying, In that moment, oh, I wish I'd have gone to church. Let me tell you something. If going to church made you a better person, I would be pretty impressive. I am here more than anybody except maybe the chambers. Where are the chambers? Yeah, there, there's the best example of the people that you ought to follow because if going to church makes you a good person, it's like you put on your Easter clothes. Did that make you a nice person on the inside? Really? Where do you buy those clothes? I've been shopping at the wrong place. Jesus is going to come, the Bible says, and those that are dead are going to be caught up to meet with Him in the air and those that are remaining alive are going to be caught up in the air as well. Did, could you see this little boy up here? Could you see him a little while ago? He didn't want to be up here. And you can sit there on that day and you can fold your arms across your chest and say, I'm not going. I didn't believe in Jesus then. Don't believe in him now. Well, let me tell you the rest of the story. You, there, if you're dead, if you've died, there is a resurrection for you. But it's not going to be a good morning on that day. The opportunity will have passed. The opportunity to say, yes, Jesus, become my Savior and forgive me of my sins will be passed. So the dead in Christ will be with him. I don't believe that, preacher. That's fine. How's that going to work out for you? How's that going to work out for you? What are you trusting in? Whom are you trusting in? Oh, I just don't believe in a carpenter from Bethlehem, Nazareth, from that day and time could have died for me. As we close, let me, let me ask you, what, what calendar do you operate from? When's New Year's to you? Well, you know it's the night of December 31st to January 1st. Not everybody agrees with you. The Orthodox people, the Greek... Greek and Russian Orthodox, New Year's for them is, is January 14th. Did you know that? I mean, we can't even figure out when New Year's is. How about the Chinese New Year? Do you know when the Chinese culture celebrated New Year's this year? February 15th. February 15th is the year of the sheep, if you wanted to know. Well, how about the Jewish people? Well, they, their, their calendar starts on September 13th. Their New Year's starts on September 13th and uh, finishes on September 15th. How about those turban-wearing jihadists. Do you know when their New Year's is? You don't know. They're in the news all the time. You don't pay attention to what's going on in the world. You think every day is going to be just like today and it's a good morning? Theirs is October 15th if you wanted to know. In Genesis 1 it says God created the heaven and the earth and established the sun and he established the sun to separate the dark from the light. And he said, it is good. And when God says you are good, it is a good morning. If you've never expressed faith in Christ, now I want you to, I want you to hear this as we close. 
I'm going to tell you how easy it is, but I want to be honest with you. I'm going to tell you how hard it is to follow. It's as easy as saying, Christ died for me. I am in need of a Savior. And the Bible says He will save you in that moment. That's the easy part. It's easy for you and I, but it wasn't easy for Jesus. He had nails driven in His hands, His side pierced, His feet nailed to the cross, and He died so that it would be easy for you to become a child of the King. The hard part begins when you follow him. It's really, really hard. And in fact, you can't follow him without his help. And so he gives you the helper who is the Holy Spirit, who is God himself. God himself comes into you. And you can wake up tomorrow, unless you've died. And if you do, we'll go by and say, they look so good. With a tear in our eye. But it is only God that can make you good. And for you to have a good morning and a good day and a good night is to know the peace that comes by saying yes to Jesus Christ. I want to lead you in a prayer. And if you pray this prayer, in that moment God answers that prayer. You have exchanged your life for His. And this was the best morning of your life. Father, I confess to you I am a liar, a thief, a cheat, an adulterer, a gossip, a whoremonger, a drug addict, an alcoholic. I tell you this because it be true, Lord. And I don't understand, God, what you're about to do, but you have said if I confess my sin to you and ask Jesus to forgive me of my sin, he will come into my life by your Spirit and make me new. Not remodel me, but make me new. And the new me, my sin is forgiven. My sin is forgiven. The debt is paid. And when I die, I will spend everlasting joy and good morning in your presence. I pray this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Perhaps you've prayed that prayer. Maybe you're like me. There was a long time where I prayed that prayer regularly. I did. I kept doing things, and I'd say back to Jesus, Won't you you save me? And then I realized that he had saved me. And the problem was I wasn't living in the joy and the peace of a good morning that Jesus says to you. Stand as we sing. And perhaps there's someone here that's made a personal and a private decision. And what you need to do is have the encouragement and the support of this church. And you want to make that public.